Hi guys, welcome to Annie Wood. It is the year 2002. I smell just like Britney Spears, okay, who has just broken up with Justin Timberlake. He's about to make the um, Crimea River video. House oh of Oh my goodness. House of Wax is not but three years away. Paris Hilton has a homely, furry little closet cleaner named Kim Kardashian, but you don't know who she is yet because you haven't seen her getting banged out by Ray J. She was, Kim Kardashian was Paris Hilton's closet cleaner? Yep. She was her organizer. Wow. Yep. Guys, uh, welcome to this episode. This blast from the past is not the full theme. It is just, I got a box of clothes from Juicy. Thank you. And Reebok, which I'll be wearing later. Um, and we love the look, don't we, Todd? Oh, it's so cute. Todd, what, where were you in 2002? I was um, cleaning out my toy box, probably. How? I had my Buzz Lightyear. I was going, <laughs> I was crashing in my cars into a How old were you? In you were 2002? Eight? You were eight? I was in second grade. Were you skateboarding yet? Maybe not. I was definitely video game playing. In 2002, I was in the, the heat of college. I was in the heat. But anyway, we have a very exciting episode today. <laughs> I, I'm really excited about this. This is um, one of my favorite movies, and I've been screaming about it, honestly, screeching about it. I've gotten confirmation I will be in the third You got confirmation? Movie. Well, I keep being told on <laughs> in front of cameras. <laughs> So, and then I take it to other cameras and I go, I will be getting murdered in Terrifier 3. We have my favorite new friend and blowing up director, writer, producer. He's all of it. Artist. Uh, artist. He's a, he's a special effects artist, Damien Leone. He's awesome. We had so much fun. We hung out with him at the comedy store and then he came here to record an episode. Any thoughts, Todd? It was so fun. It was a very spooky episode. Very scary. Very, very scary and spooky. And so if you're a chicken, then don't watch this episode. This right? episode is not for chickens. We geek out <laughs> about horror and we have a really good time. And this is one of my favorite episodes. I love meeting new people and sharing them with you guys. And definitely watch Terrifier and Terrifier 2. And it's the best. Who can make a scary clown? Not hacky. Damien Leone. All right, guys. Um, I also am in the throes of the Annie Wood tour. Ooh. Welcome to Annie Wood tour. We're having a great time. We had a blast in Washington, D.C. And we are excited to see you in Seattle, Washington at Laughs Comedy Club, March 10th and 11th. I'll be in Tampa, Florida at Spl Side Splitters, March 17th and 18th. The following week, I'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'll also be in Toronto, Canada, April 20th, 21st and 22nd. I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'll be in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'll be in Calgary. A lot more dates being added. Go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. Come meet me. The meet and greets are so fun. We're also going to count how many times she says Split Siders. Because Split Siders is a comedy magazine. Split Siders? Yeah. <laughs> Split Siders. I don't think it exists anymore, but it was like a comedy <laughs> magazine. Guys, enjoy this episode. I love my Stannies, my Insannies, my Orfannies, my. How about Hammies? My Because I'm going to hammer you in the no, head. No, don't hammer me. Stop. Get over here, woman. Get over here. Stop. Welcome to Annie Wood. All right, guys. Welcome to Annie Wood. I am here today with. My new favorite film creator. You may have heard me talking about him nonstop. I have his merch. I have his things. I haven't shut up about him since I saw his, well, his second, the first movie I also was impressed with, but the second movie to see it in the theaters. We got Damien Leon here. Am I saying it right? Leon? You are, yes. Okay. Like Baloney. Like Bologna. Oh, yeah. Leone. Okay, I was not saying I was like, Leon. I was just that's silent E I was giving you. Yeah, you want to How's that? That work? But okay, nice. so I saw Terrifier 2 in the theaters with Todd. It was so good. I was in a car accident on the way in. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, I'm doing great. We have a plastic surgeon on hand. It's going to sew me up. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I feel like by the ads. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like I'll be okay for the ads. But um, so we went and saw Terrifier 2 because we saw Todd puts horror movies on at night when we go to sleep. And 
which is a weird thing, but I guess. I've got a, a reason for it. Okay, well, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. But so we, saw, we see this movie and I'm like, yeah, of course I want to see it. Definitely want to see it in the theater. We think it's going to have a very short run. Yeah. Not, no offense. No, yeah. <laughs> it just seemed like so. it was like, we better yeah. go see it quick. <laughs> it was so f- good. It's so good. I was screaming. It was so good the whole time. I usually fall asleep during movies. I usually get restless. I want to go. I'm like, what are we doing? I really go for the popcorn. <laughs> It was so good the whole way through. I loved it so much. I'm on a live. I get on my my phone when we leave. I do a live stream on Instagram. I'm like, you guys got to see this movie. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's so disgusting. It's so horrific. It's so stupid and funny and ridiculous. And they're like, you should follow Damien Leone. And I go, okay. So I go over to look to follow you. And you're already following already me. And I'm like, already it was a one fan. of them G moments where I was like, yep, yes. Yep. Already so, a fan. Then we've been DMing. I've been bragging to everyone. I've been name dropping you. <laughs> it really only works around some people. Other people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but the people that know, I'm, no. I'm still niche, right? Still no, no, no. But it's under- growing. <laughs> it's growing. Yeah. And then I was like, whenever I was like going to try to go to, you live in Staten Island, right? I do. Yeah. I was yeah. like, then maybe I'll take a ferry. <laughs> There's a fucking chance I'm taking a fucking ferry. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I was very excited and then we were kind of kindred on DMs and then we hung out at the comedy store the other day and I want to tell you, this was what I was afraid and I'm, Uh you aren't this, I was afraid you were going to have like a really kind of like shy, like nerdy, (laughs) like, like in Sally, like I just sit at home and think of slicing women from their down well i do I no do. you do but, yeah, but you're right, like yeah. you do it in a more masculine way okay yeah. so i'm glad that you're you're more of a manly man i i was just worried if you came in you were like oh hi like if you had like a high-pitched voice or something i would have been so scared of you oh interesting okay <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah people don't know what to expect or they have the and this idea of me when i get on a zoom or something yeah they're like they're like very nervous yeah like and we then, think maybe you'd be like a little autistic yeah. which is cool and to then, be autistic but if you're slicey and autistic that's scary yeah. And then they hear the Staten Island accent and then it really just throws a curveball. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. well, this is like Jersey Shore guy doing yeah. these terrifying <laughs> movies. Like. No, honestly, I am surprised you're not, you don't have a spray tan. You have the voice of a spray tan. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm I've a big fan it. of spray tans. I know that you were saying that you had an ex that had spray tans. Yeah, because and... we were talking about spray tan in the bed and the, it flaking off at the, yeah. jo- at the joints and things it like is. that. Yeah, it yeah. should be inspiration. It's yeah. very like, uh, <laughs> it looks like a dead body's been like laying yes. there excrement. <laughs> Gets all over you too. I mean, you wake up the next morning and it's yeah. all over the guy. No, yeah. I get spray tans. Our dog will like, I'll hold him, <laughs> and then half of his body will be spray tan yeah. for months, for months until we cut it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. It's a little white trash thing I get to bring th- with me through life. So, did you jump right into Terrifier two without seeing one? Right? I saw. We saw one at home. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. On on our regular tv okay then when we were like i was telling everyone to go see terror i'm like go see it before it's out of the theater i'm like you guys have to see it in the theaters well we we went to the theater and we saw some other movie but then on the wall of the theater i think it was yeah what movie did we see i think it was some amc theater it said terrifier 2 playing in theaters and Crazy, we were like right? yeah, well, yeah we have to yeah. see it <laughs> yeah that was surreal yeah, we didn't expect it to play in theaters at all. I thought it was going to be in a couple of art house theaters on the first weekend. Yeah, and they were like, oh, you know, the distributor to their credit, they were really pushing the idea of it being in theaters. And they were like, now, yeah. what? Like, how did it happen? So you were going to just do it? It was just going to be like one weekend. Like, how do they do that? They just see the s- ticket sales and then they're like, we'll keep it. Pretty much, there's like this middleman company. I still don't know exactly how it works, but they're able to get it into like a handful, maybe like 200, 250 AMC's and Regals, and but they have to. The, the theater chain has to take it. Like they yeah. can't just take anything, but they were like, yeah, they had, there was like some confidence behind it, but it was only supposed to play for that first weekend on like 250 screens. And then as it's getting closer, they're like, I think it's going to be 500, 800. Then I think a thousand by the first weekend. I was like, oh, oh my yeah. God. All right. This is crazy. And then the AMC literally like a stone's throw away from my apartment. Like you just said, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's like they have the poster and I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, this is like <laughs> crazy. And then it played that weekend. And then I think by Saturday night or Sunday, you started seeing on Twitter, yeah, yeah. you know, my friend just puked in the theater seeing <laughs> Terrifier the 2. the best The press. greatest thing. And it was all, I promise you, it was all organic. Because yes, people started fainting. thinking yeah. we were doing it, which is genius. I wish we did. Yeah. Uh, but, and then, uh, you know, fainting and panic attacks and, you know, puking. And the, the greatest picture that ever came out of like this situation on Twitter. It's like my friend just passed out in the theater watching Terrifier 2 and it's his friend 
in a chair with paramedics. There's like an emoji, <laughs> emoji with like smiley face blocking him and his identity. And then over his shoulder is the Terrifier 2 poster. And I was just like, you can't. And then that was it. Like by Monday morning, it was oh, off yeah. to the races. Like Stephen King tweeting about yes. us. Yeah, Howard Stern so talking about us for like an entire segment. Because the yeah. guy Richard Christie on the show is obsessed with, uh, okay. with the Terrifier. Um, and then like all morning talk shows are talking about yeah. Jerry O'Connell's like, I was like, I'm taking my kids to see it tonight. No, it is. It's like, because you know what it is? It's so gross that it's funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, and sure. Art's so funny and he's yeah. so creepy and it's like, it really feels. And it, just having that, watching that in the theater was so, it was it's like so you met, especially like after pre, like post pandemic, like seeing a movie in a theater like that, that everyone in the theater is like laughing yeah. and like screaming and having a good time. It was just so fun it to watch. It was a cool like communal yeah. cathartic yes. experience after all this reality. Re exactly. And this usually it's like a reality. bad movie that yeah. does that for people. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like The Room or something sure, like sure. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, this is actually good. It was just so fun. It was like the most fun thing. It was like such like a a roller coaster and so disgusting. And you were like, what's your favorite part? And I was like, yeah. Todd was like, relax. I was like writing every part of the movie. He's like, you don't just say every single one. I'm like, there's every single one. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> no, it's so good. Now, okay, so now you're out like doing meetings, things are blowing up. It's like, so yeah. wait, I, okay. So when you did Terrifier, <laughs> like, are you like an IT guy too? Like, were you, were you doing this full time or were you like? I was literally delivering flowers when I was writing <laughs> Terrifier 2. Right? That's really wow. sick. That's yeah, a sick yeah. thing. I, I remember coming up with the uh, the laundromat scene as I was delivering flowers and I was like, because I had to... You just saw a little girl diary and you're like, just... you know what? I'm going to put that in a movie. That was my little uh, exorcist homage for sure. Uh, but yeah, like all the time. That's how I get so many of my ideas. It's like I love driving, just zoning out, listening to music. I came up with the, the title of Terrifier when I was... You know, from yeah. part one, delivering yeah. flowers, so many ideas in the flower, yeah. man. but it was just, so that was like the job I always had to go back to just to like have something consistent, yeah. but I would get, um, you know, I would do like these freelance makeup gigs whenever I could. If I get, got to direct a movie in the meantime, I would just stop with the flowers and I'd go off for a couple of months and direct the movie. Oh, yeah. And, but that was it. Like, no, it's so funny. You're bringing people joy and terror. Like yeah. you're like, <laughs> Oh, and then giving them flowers. And then, oh yeah. I made and people's day like, all the time. Here's yeah. a beheaded. <laughs> cup with the candy in it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i told um, you know, i told you i don't uh, i give off the interesting impressions no sometimes. it's good you're, perfect. you're everything i want you to be i was so excited when you came to the comedy store it was so fun um so damien came with Catherine, who was in the first terrifier you may know her from getting split there she is right there she's right here <laughs> she, split pussy down <laughs> But um, it was really fun to be able to introduce her to people to be like, hey, this is Catherine. She was in Terrifier. She, she was cut pussy down. <laughs> and she was she, saying how she saw, she saw <laughs> Pete Davidson. She didn't realize that he was a fan of the movie and he didn't huge, recognize her. Yeah, I was like, fan. you should have done a handstand yeah. <laughs> and seen like, do you recognize me now? Right. I mean, come on, the audacity not to. I was but thinking the, about like, saying <laughs> she would have a picture where she had her legs up. <laughs> do you know when we do now, um, Dave and I, Dave, uh, David Howard, the one who plays mm -hmm. Art the Clown, we do horror conventions all the time. We get in invited and i since i do the makeup i put him in costume and then we do photo ops and now one of the things is people actually do the handstand so like i'll hold one <laughs> leg he holds the other and puts the hands on so that's become a thing the, the fans are so amazing they're so crazy they bring all these props for him to use they bring a like a saran wrap so we can like put it around yeah. there like he's suffocating them um it's it's nuts uh yeah. Well, it's, it's so fun. It's so playful and it's like never ending. I was just talking to you about yeah. your merch. Like this merch is so funny. So there's a scene where there's a kid eating art crispies, <laughs> Christ but you don't think you're going to like get the box ever. <laughs> you don't think you're going to get the box with all the things in it. And then I just saw today you announced that there's going to be barf bags. Barf bags. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. It's we started so selling good. barf bags because they started doing that as a gimmick, obviously, once yeah. it's, uh, people started really puking. Um, well, I'm like big fan of that type of stuff. Like I have, the, I'm wearing my pixelated socks because I always pixelate my feet because of the foot fetish guys. Oh, there you so go. So I sell pixelated socks. <laughs> like I like any sort of like stupid. But so, um, so obviously there's like Terrifier, the first one, but before that, the first Art the Clown was the All Hallows Eve, yes. right? Yeah. We so, haven't seen that. I want to see that one. You don't, yeah. yeah. don't want to see it? <laughs> no, no I'll tell you what. Um, not as a whole, but I'm still so proud of the, cause it's an anthology. So right. it was my two, I made two short films with Art the Clown 
like when I was oh, okay. becoming a filmmaker, you know, and I was like, I didn't go to film school. So talked to my, my mother and some family members into giving me money to make a short film because I couldn't afford to go to film school. And the first short was with Art the Clown, but he's only yeah. in the first like four minutes. Yeah. But everybody who saw it was like, dude, that clown at the beginning <laughs> is insane. I need to see more. You have to keep making more with that. Right. So then a couple of years later, I made a short film called Terrifier. It's like 20 minutes long. And that's really when I turned art into a slasher, yeah. really started developing his yeah. sense of humor. But it's um, so, I still think it's so solid and it's so creepy. He yeah. might be the creepiest he's ever been in that 20 okay. minutes. Yeah. So okay. just for that alone, it's worth it's worth checking out. But as a whole- And is it the same so, actor that plays him? It's, it's, it's not, not, okay. No. So it's my buddy, uh, Mike Gianelli was the first Art the Clown. Mike Gianelli. Mike Gianelli. We all have a Mike Gianelli. Yeah. I know, it sounds so New York, New Island? Jersey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like, reminds me of what's it, his name, your poker playing friend. It's so funny. Not an actor by any means. He was just my friend and, you know, I do special effects. Mm -hmm. So um, he was like my guinea pig. So yeah. he would just hang out with me while I'm making cuts and I'm figuring out bullet hits. And I'd be like, Mike, like, come to the side of the house. Are you guys I'm going to put this. drinking, smoking weed? No, what are you doing? We, not, smoking yeah, cigarettes, yeah, we, do, maybe? we did smoke. There was a time period where I did smoke a lot with him. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. It seems like kind of fun to like cut people up when you're really high. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would do it when we were high, but I would. We would hang out and uh, get stoned all the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and I'd be like, you know, let me just test out this bullet hit, bring him to the side, you know, set my camera up and like have a blood pump, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I molded his face and I would uh, put, make, zombie prosthetics for him things like that this so when i made dream. this yeah so when i made it's this fun dark, so I can't remember this to me. <laughs> you, you did you want to die in you want to die i in really want to die in right? terrifying yes, three yes like you don't have, obviously it's your movie you don't have to i've said it on every <laughs> podcast i've ever done but it's fine i do have it in writing but um i thought maybe you did or maybe you died in a movie maybe you died i've on never some i will make sure i'm a death virgin for you okay so we're gonna have to go like guns blazing then huh Okay. Listen, I yeah, maybe blow her head up or something. Oh my or... god, it's gotta be slower. It's gotta be a lot slower, a lot more sadistic. It's like, yeah, yeah, gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. <laughs> and bigger. And you can see Art doing. Yeah. Right? You can see him doing that too and getting winded. I had him do that actually. The uh, not that, but uh, the the hacksaw scene in part one because I like injecting little moments of levity, especially yeah. when, once I hired Dave and David's this like great comedic physical he's comedian. So funny, he's yeah. so good. He's so funny. So we inject a little bit of comedy every once in a while. So there was a moment when he's hacking up Catherine, and I was like, Dave, you know, why don't you like take a break and like you're really out of breath and like, had <laughs> and, and it was great, and we filmed it, and like it, it's really good. But I didn't want, I didn't use it because I didn't want to break the tension of right. what was making that. Yeah. Yeah. so you know impactful but we did do that and it was funny it was yeah just like, yeah and then so when you were casting so you had your friend do the first one and then you yeah. were like we got to get serious no this. no i wanted him to do uh to do this one to do terrifier so bad but um he's not he's just not an actor and he just told me he's like dude i can't stand those like hours in the chair and all these you know months of filming yeah. especially yeah. with me could turn into years of filming terrifier yeah. or two but and uh, I really wanted him. I begged him because I really believed like it was going to take off. But yeah. He, he didn't do it. How does but, he feel now about it? Um, I think he's fine with it. I mean, he's very just happy with where he is in life. Again, he didn't want to be an actor. So yeah. it's not his, yeah, he's totally cool. In my head, like I'm this. always like, people yeah. always want to be something. And I'm like, oh, they don't do that. Yeah. They want just a regular life. <laughs> no, this I was guy telling is... you about like stalkers and stuff. Like, it is what you asked for. I'm like, you're right. right. They really <laughs> did definitely ask for No, stalkers. he's like just the happiest, you know, being a dad and everything. And yeah, he's yeah. So, yeah, Do you have any kids? Good. No kids. No, no, no. Would you bring your kids to horror? Uh, in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah sure. Because it is good and it's like a desensitization. It's a, well, I know like it, fun. it didn't screw up me or my yeah. childhood friends. And yeah. I used to show them these movies since they're, you know, five, literally yeah. five years old, five, six. And they weren't allowed to, but I was just like, yeah. you know, we'd sneak and I was already watching Toxic Avenger and Basket yeah, Case. Yeah, Toxic the Avenger was my shit. I haven't seen, yeah. but we have to watch Basket Case too. You right really there. have to see yeah. Basket Case. Because yeah. Toxic yeah. Avenger, I was telling you this the other day, my mom, every time there was a, unrated movie she thought it meant that it it's was like, for it's kids good, good <laughs> so we were watching the most fucked up shit uh, that's so crazy we were watching i remember kentucky fried movie was one we saw we had and toxic toxic avenger we were obsessed with it just loved <laughs> the running over the head like it was so funny yeah just melons and shit i guess that movie has there. some imagery that's kind of hard to shake yeah. like i still see that kid getting his head run over but i love i think from that like i love like Pedro Pascal when he got his face crushed in and game like all those are my favorite things and everything I've ever seen. Head crushes, like, yes, yeah, they're just good. A, scr a crush. Yeah. It's like amazing. Sometimes maybe just like some substance, maybe a food is shoved into a <laughs> face hole. I don't want to give it away. Oh, 
I got to, yeah, 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 I'm working on something now where you're going to like yes. some sadistic idea. I'm going to like yeah, everything yeah, yeah. you do. I'm very confident in you. I feel oh, like, you know, there's sweet. like the true detective of it all where the, the first one was good and then you're like, uh oh. Yeah. I know it's uh, not. Do you have any fears of that? Of always. Like, yeah. Always. Yeah. Well, I yeah. guess that'll keep you good. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But especially with, um, you know, we always have to top the big kill scene. Right. So that's always hanging over my head. What yeah. are we going to do next? I mean, how far can you like I could go really far, but I always kind of challenge myself with riding like a fine line of accessibility mixed with really stepping over the line. You yeah. Because I mean, you could do that. I could imagine the sickest thing ever. You yeah. Know what I mean, like art could pick up a infant by its feet and just kind of like <laughs> it's easy to go as shocking as possible but you like that one <laughs> i don't like it i love it i think i know it's bad you know but um yeah it, it's a lot more challenging when you try and um walk that line yeah yeah i so. mean it's a crushed baby it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> but it is so like the over the topness is what makes it funny and makes it like you know you live through it yeah well i want the movie to be fun too yeah. i don't want everybody leaving terrified just feeling like the world is bleak and grim yeah. and like i'm miserable like don't get me wrong i like a lot of movies like that like yeah. i love henry portrait of a serial killer or martyrs you know but when yeah. you leave those movies you feel like you're alone in the middle of the ocean on a cloudy day just like ready to die like it, well you know uh, a movie i saw alone with my dad in the movie theater Requiem for a dream. Oh, that'll do it. Alone yeah. with my wow. dad, 16 years old. 16, oof. He picked me up from high school. We wouldn't read any of, the, we would just go to what was critically acclaimed. We wouldn't read any reviews oh, or anything. that's kind of awesome, actually. So the time <laughs> of day, no one else is there. So it's just me and my dad essentially on a date alone in a theater watching just ass to ass I, penetration, I, <laughs> like touching each other's hands accidentally in the popcorn. The <laughs> like, oh my God. We were just like straight. My dad said that he just kept looking forward. He was like, I'm just going to look for it. I don't, I'm just going to pretend I don't know whether she's here or not. And just, I love how you just wrote it out though. Oh yeah. Always write it out. Right. Is well, it's ever? a good movie. Yeah, it wasn't like we had to be disrespectful to the movie. <laughs> now, do you think, um, are you going to get a lot of cameos now you think in your movies? I know you're going to have one really big yeah, celebrity sure. cameo. Um, you had Jericho in the last yeah, one. Yeah. I love Jericho. And he's how did a, that come about? He's, uh, Someone in his band is a huge slasher fan, like horror movie fan. And so is Jericho. And he was like, dude, you have to see this. I think it was just the scene. Like, you have to yeah. see this at the Hacksaw scene. And he showed uh, and he showed Chris. And Chris was like, oh, my God, that's crazy. And then he became really, not obsessed with Art the Clown, but he really liked Art the Clown. And then- no, we're all obsessed with that. It's like, it's so good. Like, he said he's going to give me the sunglasses. I'm like, I will wear those sunglasses. The sunflower glasses. I yeah, will wear those They're in the movie for two seconds. And it's now there's so probably a hundred tattoos that I'm aware of. of, of him How cool is that to have something people are going to have tattoos on? It's really wild. I mean, that's it's so um we're so grateful you're and, rogan well, yeah. hello you're yeah. rogan <laughs> my guy I yeah, mean, yeah. that's my boy a I lot of him. people talk about the the hacksaw scene but the i love from the first one the boob scene where he cuts Ooh. off the girl's boobs yeah. and dance around with her tits yeah on. that's you one know, of my favorites you went with that girl that just got the boob guys <laughs> that's a good one that's a twist yeah, one. Yeah. i always say that was very the most awkward day on set by far because for so many reasons, one, like it wasn't terrifier. So yeah. we're just these, we're just these like weird kids making this really <laughs> weird killer clown movie. It's like five o'clock in the morning. And it's just, yeah. that was like a moment where I'm like, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Like, and, and even Dave, uh, he, in the script, he wasn't supposed to be naked. It was just, he was supposed to skin her and wear it over the clown costume. And then like two weeks before we started shooting it, I'm thinking, I'm like, that's going to look it's not going to be as uh, intense or impactful uh, you know, if he was naked and then he was covered in blood, like he would really like transform into another human and he would just look so, so much more disturbing. And I called up Dave. I'm like, Dave, I'm thinking, would you, you know, I think it's going to be so much better if you're like naked doing this. And he's like, oh, really? He's like, um. <laughs> and he just like pauses for a second and he's like, all right. He's like, you know what? And to his credit, this is so cool. He's like, you know, if Catherine's going to be naked for that scene, he's like, I'll, I'll take one for the yeah. team. He's like, I'll do it. You know? And he's such oh, a, yeah. such a cool guy, such a good guy. And uh, he did it. But I mean, like, he's like, I don't think he's ever been in a movie before up until that point. Yeah. And now he's got to get naked in Where'd front of everybody. Just an open casting call. Wow. And he came in and he oh, was wow. like, all they knew, cause it was like through online and, and all they knew was they were in for playing a killer clown. There was no specifics. They didn't know it was terrifier or, or 
he was silent or anything. So he just showed up and he walks into the room. He's like the sixth guy to walk in the room. And he's like, oh, he's like, so killer clown, what am I, what am I doing? And I'm like, well, he's like, I don't have any sides or anything. I don't really know. I'm like, yeah, don't worry. I'm like, this character doesn't speak. I was like, I just like, need just, to. Can you get naked? Or I, was like, I was like, let me just, <laughs> see your ass. I was like, <laughs> I was just like, listen, I need to see you decapitate somebody and just do it very gleefully. You're having a very good time. I, like, I know that's, that's the best thing. It's it like, was, you can't be upset. Art's having such a good time. Has, I'm having such a good time. How can I be upset when I'm yeah. killing his joy like this? And I, and I was really just going with, because because again, Mike was my buddy, not an actor. And I just figured, you know, I could direct this guy like most of the way, you know, but now starting again from scratch, I knew I wanted an actor who was taller, thinner, because that would be so much creepier. Yeah. And, uh, and then as soon as Dave walked in, I just, this tall, thin guy with this big smile. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, he's going to look really good in the makeup. It's so weird when and, I see him and his teeth aren't all fucked up. I'm right. like, oh, you don't have weird fucked up yeah, teeth. Right? No, no. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Um, so the budget on the first one was like super, super low, super low right? This was just your parents lending you money type. <laughs> it's my part my producing partner right now is still me and him you're just are producing, terrified you're like, <laughs> right, not my partner partner <laughs> you're, you're like a gay man's ripped i don't mind it at all that's, I'll a, take good, it. that's a compliment i love it i love it they do i get a lot of compliments yes, from no, gay guys have, like, they do you're the amount of ripped where it's like he could be trolling for cock <laughs> I'll, no problem i'll take it but it's sad island it's trolling for puss it's the same thing <laughs> um so my partner my partner phil um he was uh Filmmaker, I worked on his um, his movie doing special effects because mm -hmm. the director of photography who shot who shot my first short with Art the Clown shot his movie and he needed uh, some gore effects. It was a war movie. He's like, I know this kid from Staten Island. He'll he'll be great. And then uh, we hit it off. And then when I was trying to do the Indiegogo for Terrifier, because nobody wanted to give me money even yeah. after All Hallows Eve. Um, what does Indiegogo mean? It's like a Kickstarter. Okay, yeah. So, so I was going to just go yeah. and try to go to the fans and see if I can get anything. Um, and I was just, everybody I knew, I was just in my emails and my phone. I'm just sending this Indiegogo campaign. I sent it to Phil. And then he kind of just like called me like, to, you know, and he's like, well, what are you really trying to do here? And I'm like, he's like, how much do you can make this movie for? I was like, I don't know, like $35,000, $30,000. He's like, I'll give you the money tomorrow if you want to do it. He's oh like, my I God. literally, after oh. years of begging people and people just like, and just, and you look back now, $30,000 is nothing. Yeah. But like nobody would give me that at right. all. It was like asking for like 30 million in my life. Yeah. Well. And, um. And then he was just like, yeah, I'll get, literally gave it to me the next day. He's like, I just want to like hang out with you. I love the makeup. He's like, so if I could just hang out, you could teach me how to do some of that. <laughs> and and that was, and he's like literally been by my side the entire way. He's the most like hands-on producer. He's on set every day. He builds sets with me. This like old school Italian yeah. guy from Coney Island. He was a commodities <laughs> trader and now he just got into movies. Oh, I love it. He's like my best friend. Has and he done other movies besides yours? No. Has well, he worked on anything else yet? No, no, no. Pretty, pretty good, much right? All, That's pretty yeah, perfect. It was his movie, yeah. and then we went into Terrifier, and then we pretty much just been riding the yeah. Terrifier train the entire time. Um, so yeah, he's but he's like my godsend. Like it would this, these movies would not exist without him. So yeah. You are you okay? So are you? Do you have any fear of if you get this like huge budget that you're definitely gonna get? That no offense, I, I mean you're <laughs> definitely gonna get a big. I. Think we so. are gonna get a bigger budget. Yeah, you're there's, gonna get obviously no you're gonna get a bigger yeah, one, yeah, but yeah. but do you are do you still want to be hands on? Do you guys still want to be the ones building stuff, or are no. you gonna like you're gonna get no? Yeah, do any, yeah. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, except anything going to be like right and direct. Cut her pussy a yeah. little deeper, yeah. a little deeper. Um, <laughs> Stretch yeah. it in half. <laughs> because well, got him. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say, um, yeah. If you get that big budget, are you like against like the? cgi over like the special effects stuff you'd rather just have it For all sure. special effects i would yeah. keep it as you know you got to keep yeah. the essence the soul of yeah. what's making this work in the first place and i'm mr practical effects i'm obsessed that's right. how i got into movie making uh, it was all effects first oh, yeah. um but we do use little cgi augmentation believe it or not even in terrifier 2 that it's so invisible you just right. can't tell it's there but there's just, just like tricks that I learned over the years that people don't even use them, you know, but I like just like building a dummy, you know, when it, she murders the girl in the bedroom in part two and then the mother walks in and art's like oh, playing. Oh, my favorite and thing then, I've ever seen in my right? life. It's like my favorite <laughs> oh, thing you. I've <laughs> ever seen in my life, which is still alive. Right, like, she's oh still alive. Oh my God. Yeah, so we we built Phil Does she and say I, mom or she mommy? She says mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom. I should have had to say mommy. Um, <laughs> 
So me, me and Phil built this rod puppet, very crude. I mean, the whole room was a set. So there's people under the bed, just like with sticks going I into her it. joints. Yes. And the, the wall behind her is like fake. So there's someone behind the wall with like a stick in her head where you could just like puppeteer. Oh it's so God. crude. So like we, and, and like bladders in her chest and someone's like, yes we yeah, didn't then. have okay so we only had like four people on set five people <laughs> so like my cameraman we're all operating this thing so he like rolls the camera and he had to go and blow into the chest and have it like breathing it's so ridiculous um but like that's in that's a situation where i can only go so far with the practicals right. so when she like wakes up we basically we digitally put the actress's real eyeball onto the dummy, so like mm. she wakes up and then you actually see the eyeball open. Right. Like you would never really know that's a that, that's mm. like a visual effect. Right. And even when she says "mom," we did the same thing. So that's a dummy head with like a wire making the jaw just like open and close. <laughs> but we put the actress's real eyeball on it, so you could see it like blinking and moving. Are they so, all freaking? Out? I mean, they must be so excited that this movie blew up like this. Yeah, I mean, there's like I think Everyone's a lot of just... people's lives changed yes. over this movie, and like no joke, in the most wonderful way. Yeah. For real especially david and lauren lauren lavera who yeah, plays sienna so cool yeah and i knew that when um when i casted her honestly we all said like i, I would tell her, like, you're, you're like this 45 i'm year like old, this, this 50 um... she's 50 she's not 50 <laughs> yeah. she, let's put an end trick, to the wait, let's put an end to the rumors because this has happened yeah. to people and she won't she won't address it like she just kind of like goes with yeah. it and like but uh she's really like 32 now or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. we'll call her 28 <laughs> yeah. for she well, People can... think she's like 45. <laughs> but there's something somewhere online that says yeah. she's 45 and it's the funniest. I was I'm telling sorry you before. She doesn't want me to say that either. <laughs> no, there's this girl that happened to her. There's this sorry. girl that yeah. no, she's young. She's very young. She, yeah, she's very she, young. But yeah. it's funny to be to be able to lie and say you're older. <laughs> <laughs> there's a girl in comedy that's like that. And it was just, it just makes me laugh so yeah. hard because you are like, oh my God, these girls, they look so young like i am young bitch yeah we did cast older we did definitely did the halloween thing where the actors are older than really high school they're supposed to be like seniors in high well, school well you don't want to work with but... high school kids then you have to like sign off and their their parents have to come sign off right and like, yeah yeah you can't show their kid well, chop their tits off or cut them in half or anything i mean it's really just i'm sure we casted for like 18 to 26 or try to get like 18 to 30 or whatever and it was just really the best actors that we could find but did like, you get any oldies coming in oh you get i you mean get, if like, you, people like yeah, 60 years old coming going like yeah <laughs> with pigtails like hey age genders race i mean it doesn't matter they'll just if they'll just send their headshots it doesn't uh, matter um but we knew lauren was just so talented so charismatic and i told her i said once this movie comes out if we ever get to make it i'm like you're just gonna take off and she really her fan base really like grew. She had like eight thousand followers before we made the movie. Now she's like over a hundred thousand. Like yeah. people love yeah. Sienna. They yeah. love her as Sienna. She's like such a like empowering character. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. a good Halloween costume. I was thinking it about is. it. Maybe I would do that as a Halloween costume. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe I'll do like and I'll be holding. I want to be art because I want to hold the dick. <laughs> is that the, the, just the tip that's what okay that's because there's a lot of different versions of art so that's the one you would choose. Maybe to, uh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> got him in the know. apron. You got him naked. There's um, going to be so many Halloween costumes. I mean, it's going to be crazy. It's, it's, gonna it's be pretty cool. It's pretty, it what was it already out this Halloween? It was. I think will, it came out right before be Halloween. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, next year yeah, it might be, next Halloween it might be a little crazier. I think it's like the, the blowing up is like tattoos and Halloween costumes. Yeah, the tattoos. That's really everything. It's, it's so crazy. Cool. It's so but cool. But also he's such a good image. That's such a good tattoo. That's what, when most people, when it was on Netflix, the first one, that's when it really blew up. And everybody's like, when we go to the cons and they come up and they, that's like the same story. They're like, I was scrolling through Netflix and I saw his face. I never heard of it. I never knew what Terrifier is, but I had to see what the hell was going yeah. on with that character. So he is, yeah, he is visually pretty uh, pleasing to the eye. Yeah. And there's something about, and I really got to, the reason he looks like that is because of Tim Curry's Pennywise. Yeah. Because when I was designing him, I was trying to stay as far away from that mm -hmm. character as possible. So I just kept taking all the color away and just making him simpler and simpler yeah. and not making him speak and just because there's no point in stepping on yeah. his toes. I mean, he's still like the king of totally. killer clowns. So. Even though I did like that.
Lazy Scar's Eye. Guy. That's Scar's guard. Lazy Scar's Eye. Oh, he's was crazy. fantastic. Yeah. He was like thought... so hot though as the clown. Was so, I was like so attracted. I was like not like I, like he's fine. Obviously he's a handsome actor, but I, mean, I was like when he was right. a clown, I was like I didn't know I would have these. There's some he's, like clown. juicy lips. I was like, oh my god, I want to fuck that clown well, again. Though he's so charismatic, and the way he plays that clown is just yeah. incredible. Yeah, that's pretty cool that he does the eye thing himself. It yeah, is yeah, kind of yeah. crazy that yeah. you were able to bring a new clown. That is like insane. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. You'd think every uh, everything had been done, right? There wasn't anything left to yeah. crack. Yeah, I don't know. And but everyone I fucking loves it. He's so awesome. <laughs> I'm like, if you guys are my fan, <laughs> if you're my actual fan, you watch this. You sit through the whole fucking thing. I don't care if you throw up, but if you do, film it. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. <gasps> I do this every morning. <laughs> I chug it. This is so good. And it's packed with over 75 vitamins and minerals for a boost, a major boost to your gut, mood, energy, and even skin, <sighs> hair, and nails. <laughs> anyway, I love the way it tastes. It's awesome. It makes me feel healthy. It's how I start my day. She gets a little green on her, but that's why she, that's why she wore a green shirt today. Guys, I'm... Look, it says dump him because Todd should have been making that for me. But it's <laughs> awesome. It's good. It keeps you hydrated in the morning. Last night, I downed. I scarfed. I scarfed a bucket and a half of po movie theater popcorn. Todd was taking <laughs> it away. He was tearing it out of my hands. I was ripping it back in. I was forcing him to feed it to me one kernel at a time. And let me tell you, I woke up with GERD. It was GERD morning, okay? It was a very GERD morning. It was a GERD morning. I was burping. I was b belching. I was, it was crazy. So I woke up. I drank this as fast as possible. And I went on a walk. And I took a little cacas. And I went on with my day. And I feel so much better. And it's a good thing because AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase, okay? And Go those to, travel packs are great. These are great. I take them on the road with me. They're all over. They're in every single um, suitcase nope, I have. Cranny. No cranny. I actually put them inside myself sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I put them in my own Lord's wallet. <laughs> Go to athleticgreens.com slash Anniewood. That's athleticgreens.com slash Anniewood and check it out. This is part of the Ripped and Rich challenge, guys. You have to start with this, okay? Every trainer I've ever had has given me something like this to drink in the morning. This is the best tasting one and my favorite. And I'm so honored that they sponsor me. Three million women experience <laughs> what? <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> she she got it wrong on the first number. <laughs> Thirty. Thirty. There's a zero there. I thought the zero was silent. 30 million women experience weakened or thinning hair. Todd, you know about thinning hair. <laughs> Ooh, and I take control of my hair with Nutrafol. He does. I, I, <laughs> I sprinkle it in his Oreos. <laughs> his Oreos are jam-packed with vitamins, let me tell you. Because I am not having a thinning hair boyfriend. It's, there's not a chance, okay? Not a chance. But this is for women, okay? This one's for women. But it doesn't matter. Todd's dandy. <laughs> we know Todd's a little soft. Uh, he can take the women's one. Begin to experience thicker, stronger, faster growing hair in three to six months. This is the best, okay? I use this every day. I take four caplets every morning. I actually already took mine today, but you can see these are almost out. I have bottles of this all over my house. I just gave my sister-in-law a bottle of these. I love them. I'm so excited. They're one of the sponsors. My hair is thicker. It's growing more in here. Look, I... F my hair up. Okay. I really do. I flat iron it. I curl it. I braid it. I dread it. I cornrow it. I shave it. She grows it back out. I grow it back out. I pluck it. I clip it in. I tape it in. I, I do a lot of things. Sometimes my mouth tape when I'm sleeping because of my bruxism and sleep issues, um, gets stuck to my hand and it ends up in my hair. I do a lot of damage to my hair. I dye it. So this is really helping me maintain that crazy hair lifestyle, but also have new growth. And it did take me a second, but it has thickened up. My hairdresser is impressed. It's a great product. I love it. Nutrafol is 100% drug-free. What? With only natural, clinically effective botanical ingredients. Have you ever been to a botanical garden? That's as beautiful as this head of hair. Ooh, my favorite part is that it works by targeting five root causes of thinning. Stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. And which part are you involved in? I am hair? the metabolism guy. Guilty. He's I eat always, the Oreos and then I make the Oreo. Yes, and he's always <laughs> pushing poop out of me. He's always, he always makes sure that I go number two. He pushes down. Uh, we he, always with have all to. His might, he pushes down on the top of my stomach and then he pushes all the way down until it squeezes out like toothpaste. It's true. It's true. So he does. He is part of the metabolism. 
Um, also the hormones, because it gets me horny. Um, <laughs> subscribe for monthly deliveries so you never miss a dose, because I do forget sometimes, and then you have to start. You just have to continuously take this and be good, okay? Just remember, set an alarm. It's like birth control, but for the birth of your new hairs, okay? It's for the birth of those new baby hairs. You buy it, and then it becomes a part of your life. You may also notice improvements in your overall well-being, including restful sleep, less stress, better skin, nails, and libido. He's got a libido me off him. Whenever she takes it, I, she always trying to jump my bones. I gotta you know, go. I say neutrophil me. <laughs> neutrophil me. I say neutrophil me. You can grow thicker healthier hair and support the show by going to Nutrafol.com and use promo code Anniewood to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer and only available to U.S. listeners for a limited time. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code Anniewood. Stand up for your strands and get Nutrafol. I got to tell you, I have a new favorite time of the week. It's not Annie Wood. It's not Trash Tuesday. It's display, it's display time, time baby. baby. We love our display. We thing. love it so much. It's oh so my cool. goodness, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, display is the cool new metal poster you'll want in every room. Have you ever seen someone hold a poster <laughs> upright like this? If Todd is holding thing. a regular it's so poster, easy. it's so right. <laughs> It'd be flipping and flopping all around. <laughs> you can't do this with a paper post. You can't just hold it straight up. Like you can't. You can't. So By you the way, can take it out. It could be a sign at a concert. You could be like, or buy a... sunglasses. <laughs> Here's what I love about this. Now, there's so much to love. Todd, have you experienced a paper cut since getting to <laughs> <laughs> no, so I thought Todd had like a, a emotional problem. You could he was see, getting so many. Look at these edges. He was getting so all. many paper cuts with our old regular paper posters. <laughs> I thought he had emotional problems. I almost committed him. I thought something was going on, but it was just from those pesky old regular nasty loser paper, paper posters. posters. Never again. You know, I got to tell you, there's we have some some really good ones on the way too. We ordered a lot of displays, and we hope you guys too do too. I want it, we got to do a display contest where you guys order the funniest display, and we will reward you. I will buy. I'm gonna buy. I'll give you a hint. This is a good display. Me get a display of me holding this display. That's an idea. You can't do that one because it won't. But <laughs> it's not your idea. But we're going to this is what I'm going to tell you what you're going to win. I'm going to buy you a pair of Jordans, okay? Ooh. Winner gets a pair of Jordans out of my own personal account, okay? You give us the size of the you shoe. You give us the size of, of the shoe. We'll find the winner. We'll find the sh the size of the shoe and I will send you a pair of Jordans. And um so what do they have to do? You have to buy the display, make because here's the thing about display. You could get your own artwork printed on a one-of-a-kind metal poster that only takes 20, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. And so. Todd, 21, because he does have a little trouble with things. But <laughs> so we call Todd the 20-second man because that's how long it takes him to put up a display. You make your own artwork, put it on a display, send it to the comedy store. We'll put it up on the show. We'll pick the best display. Okay, so yeah, I guess we'll do the display competition where get your funniest display and have it sent to the comedy store. We'll reveal them on air. We'll reveal them at display time. At display time, our favorite time of week. So we'll bring out all the displays we get and then the winner gets a, a new shoe. They have officially licensed designs from Fight Club, Alien, South Park, Ooh, and more. I like South Park. It's he funny listens to, me. to a lot of South Park. It's crazy. He's always watching South Park and folding <laughs> my underwear. All he does is fold my clothes and watch South Park. That's my bow. And, and hangs displays. And that's But you great. know what? Displays don't take that long to hang, so now he has more time to fold. Oh my God. But it's great that your poster comes with a magnetic sticker. So you just pop it on the wall and then you hang up your poster. You just pop that and baby on the wall. Sticks. Look how beautiful that is. It's beautiful. It's like a sunset. It's like a sunset that you need sunglasses for, but you're like, oh, I can't reach them. You're like, eh. <laughs> no power tools, no wall damage. Easily switch out a new poster in seconds. This guy's, I I'm seeing like a rotating display involved wall. here. I I'm so excited. We have our Netflix walls, you guys know. <laughs> 
Click the link in our description to see some of my favorites and get your ready to hang piece of art. Save 22% if you buy one or two and get 33% off when you buy three or more. You're gonna want more than three. Mm -hmm. The discount will be automatically applied to your cart when you click the link. Use code Anniewood when you visit Displate.com to get the discount. That's Displate.com code Anniewood. Or click the link in the show notes. It's so good. Yeah, I'm excited to see. And so you've just been going on meetings and stuff. Did you sign with agencies and all that? Like, I, I did. How bad did that happen with the first one or the second one? No, the second one. Everything blew up after now the second like, Ooh, one. Ooh, there's money in this. Let's exactly. get involved. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's been crazy. So I've only it's only my second time in LA. Yeah. So like three weeks ago, I was here for the first time because they set up a bunch of meetings. So I went from <laughs> literally like making movies in my backyard. To now, like I was just with like the, the president of Universal and so the CEO cool. of Miramax. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? It's like, gonna be crazy like, what you can like, do to see what you can do with a bigger budget too, like what you'll be able to do. Yeah, because you're right. Know. You won't have to do all this other bullshit stuff. Like, no, it's too much. I love it, but listen, there's if you have the means, you have the money. There are the most talented artisans and just like makeup artists out there. It's like I would so much rather have them do and I get to sit back and relax. And if you have to do all those effects, first of all, it's one of the reasons why I took three, almost three years to make is because I was doing all the special effects right, basically, right. just me and Phil doing it. That takes forever. We have yeah. to start weeks at a time. Did we you guys edit it too? I edited the whole wow. thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my Edi God, ed this edited, is crazy. Yeah, edited and did the sound design. I did th those two things. Um, I mean, I don't do everything, but I do, that's a lot of stuff, yeah. though. That's a lot of, a lot of work. Um, but again, I don't pay myself yeah. to do it either, yeah. so that's how we're able to do it for that, yeah. for that budget. He's just yeah. in the middle of the night just, like, handing flowers out to people. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is, like, so funny. That's, like, the perfect but, job for you to tell me that you have. The flowers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't that kind of make sense? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not all, you know, sometimes you have to go into the, uh, a lot of times you have to go into the cemetery too. And put that, On the grave? Sure. Christmas oh. blankets. Um, yeah. Wreaths. Yeah. Just. Do you give them a little extra prayer or do you just throw them down? Never. Right. Toss them in the <laughs> It's not my yeah. fucking dead yeah. loved one. <laughs> Chances are you're like lost too in the big cemeteries. Yeah. Oh, they're when crazy. You have, when they send you into the section from like the 18, 1800s, like you need maps to like find <laughs> the graves. It's really insane. That's actually uh, so sweet to have flowers but, sent to your grave and. You died hundreds of years right? ago. Someone still, yeah, they still. Yeah. Someone still they gives still a can. shit about you. Yeah. <laughs> I went to. I never. I like never really went to cemeteries. I feel like so many people in my life were cremated, and then I was in. I was doing a gig in Connecticut, like four years ago. My mom's like, "Oh, your grandfather and your grandmother are buried there." So I was like, "Oh, I'll just go." I rented a car. I was like, "I'll just go." I was like fully impacted by it. I was like, this is crazy. Like oh. I could feel like them. It was just so weird. And then I went and talked to the groundskeeper and he was like, I remember your grandfather. And I was like, my grandfather died when I was like 15. So I was like, yeah, he goes, look, and he opened the guest book and my grandfather had like written stuff in there. Oh, no way. Isn't that crazy? Wow. It's so weird. That's spooky. Yeah. I love and then cemeteries. I found, and then I found out you, there's, um, they have, uh, yeah, they're very cool, but they have Yelp reviews for them. Oh, I didn't know Isn't this. That's so oh. funny. It's like, it's, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? It's not you? surprising, though. But, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? I'm visiting my grandfather's grave. But I guess people do hang there. So when we were that, teenagers, that was kind that of the spot. My entire yeah. childhood, there was a cemetery. Literally, my backyard was a cemetery. Oh, so wow. me and my friends lived in there literally up until, Jesus, my 20s. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd start going back there and drinking and yeah. smoking. And like, so yeah. there was that transition. Oh, it was some of my greatest memories ever was that. Banging cemetery. in a graveyard? I never banged in a graveyard, did you? Neither have no. I. I've, <laughs> I've wished. We're too old now. Yeah. Honestly, guys, I just had to say we're a little too old now. I did. Doing it now, it's a little weird. I did I did hook up with some girls in the cemetery. When I was a kid, we'd go back there. Yeah, I did hook yeah, up I'm with I'm sure girls. there was a yeah. hand job yeah. that got off our bikes. We never and... got a hand job. Do you remember the name <laughs> of the <laughs> cemetery? <laughs> Again, if you do it now, it's like, oh my God. Do you remember Who the name of the cemetery? We could see if it has a good rating or not. Oh, yes. Um, oh, wait, that cemetery? I know my cemeteries. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, your cemetery. Ocean, uh, Ocean View Cemetery in Staten Island. Yeah. What would you have given it? Oh, how many stars? What's the uh, ten? <laughs> What's the what, how many stars can you get? What's the most? I don't do, I don't do stars. Yeah, Wait, what, what are do you stars? get? Stars? What you Five get? stars. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it can't be good. It's a very... <laughs> Two point three out of five stars. A, yeah, that's a my very... wiki feet rating's better than that. <laughs> that's a that's like a low end cemetery. Yeah. It's cool though. I guarantee you. 
um what moravian cemetery in staten island has a has a great rating I bet you that one that's where i mean I, that was across the street from my flower place which is also <laughs> moravian flowers uh moravian yeah I bet you that one's got a beautiful this cemetery is a good prank call we should start calling graveyards <laughs> we did a prank call where we called a funeral oh, yeah. 3.8 that's a little better. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was going to be better, though. Yeah. Beautiful Look, you're cemetery. Upset. Your family members are dead. So when you're rating this, you're not in a good mood. So I think that that's like, that's like getting five out of five. Okay. 3.8. That's I a would good, say. that's a, yeah. I like Can that. you just look up graveyards and find five star ones? I want to know what it is about them. The Hollywood Cemetery is fun. When you come back, when it's like warmer out, we'll go to the Hollywood Cemetery. It's okay. really fun. They do show movies there and stuff. Oh, that's a, and obviously. Everybody's got, there, right? Oh my right? god, we should do Terrifier there. I, that's pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Oh my god. Inglewood, I'll find out who to okay. find. Inglewood Park Cemetery in Inglewood's got 4.5 stars. Ooh, wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll bet what cemeteries so where good? like people, you go to the Red Lobster people go, people go and they camp and they have lunch and things like that. Like there's that yeah. big cemetery in Brooklyn where it's like so yeah. big and it's like an event if you go. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. I mean the grave rubbing thing. I went to the coolest cemetery everyone was in in uh, Ireland. Have you ever been to Ireland? I haven't. No. Ireland is fucking cool. Are you Irish? No. You'll feel Irish. I'm not Irish, but I went, I was like, am I Irish? Like, you're like, I've come home, like the homeland. Oh, uh, they had a, I went to this uh, graveyard and they were like, it was from like the 1600s. And it was like cra the craziest thing I've ever I seen. Love it. And my, I love It was like the oldest graveyard. They had the oldest cross there or something. It was like the weirdest thing. I was like, it felt like, uh, I felt like Carl Sagan where I was like, I'm the tiniest little dot. In the universe. Right? Changes perspective. No, I was like, yeah. oh my God. I'm like worried about like my plane tickets and stuff. And this person died. Well, if so they long. have cemeteries like that in America, kids will just kick over the oldest or, cross. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's They're funny banging, you say that. Yeah. Yeah. There was a um, mausoleum in Ocean View Cemetery, my cemetery. <laughs> and uh, when I was maybe like eight or something, the older kids were like 12, 13, like that crew went into that cemetery and broke into it with a, went into that mausoleum, broke into it with a sledgehammer and they desecrated everything. And then we would all sneak in and see what they did. And I, I, I actually had like camcorder footage, like old JVC camcorder. And you saw it, the whole floor was just coffins and drawers and you saw like the bones and everything. Oh, cause really they sad. smashed like they smashed mind. everything. Um, yeah, this was a long time ago. It's this was sad, like but then that the 90s, becomes the thing. Did you see 90s. Nope? No, I haven't yet actually. Nope has like a scene in it where, there's like a crazy thing happened at um, when the they were filming a the sitcom with a monkey in it, and then I know about that, right? Yeah, yeah okay. but then like later on, the kid grows up that was in the show, yeah, and he has like a like a little back room with all of the like props and stuff from and like bloody shoes and stuff from when the right wasn't there bloody shoes and stuff in it. I from think from so. the attack and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So then they then like the fucked upness of it becomes the new thing to see, I guess. But it is fucked up if you smash someone's <laughs> parents. I bones. just saw something real quick. I saw <laughs> so, something funny. I typed in Terrifier Two on Google, and it says uh, in the you know that worst the movie ever made. Who is a scumbag? Yeah. You know, it says people also ask, and there's like a bunch of questions. Oh, boy, there's yeah. one that says. Is Terrifier okay for kids? Love it. <laughs> and what answer. it says, the answer is, what parents need to know? <laughs> parents need to know that Terrifier is a slasher movie about an evil killer clown. Blood and gore are extremely strong, and the violence against women is disturbing. Oh, yeah. One woman is hung upside down, <laughs> her breasts are visible, and sawed in half from her crotch to her head. <laughs> Listen, there's violence against uh, men the, in a second, I okay? Know, it still doesn't matter. I am... I am already labeled as a well, ultimate like misogynist it's always, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's always like that i loved it listen <laughs> i, I think art it. has possibly more female fans than than male it's believe so it or not good. yeah yeah no joke no it really yeah. is just so <laughs> good <laughs> so we i'm watching uh i was watching you know i was online looking at different you know, paparazzi photos. And I saw Pete Davidson courtside in a Terrifier shirt. Yep. That I gave him. Wow. Pete's my buddy. Pete's a boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We have a boy in common. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love him. He is one of the coolest guys ever. He, uh, like the week before Terrifier 2 came out in theaters, I got an 
email from his rep saying, hey, I represent Pete <laughs> and uh, he's a big fan of yours. He'd like to, I was like, is this real? I thought like <laughs> I was getting totally pranked by a friend of mine. Because if you're from Staten Island, you do anything in the movie business or whatever, like you'll, they'll just joke and call you Pete Davidson. Like, oh, so how's your boy Pete? Like if you don't know him or not. That happened in a meeting out here. It happened in a meeting. Like one of these studio heads, they're like, how's Pete Davidson? Like how's your, like they had no idea yeah. that I know. And I'm like, actually he's great. It's like, I was like, it's, it's like talking to him this morning. Uh, but uh, yeah, and he's like, it, obviously he's like, uh, yeah, he wants you to call him, gave me his number and I texted him. He's like, oh dude, I'm on set. He's like, I'll call you like in like three hours. And like calls me up and I'm still thinking it might be a prank. And then all of a sudden I hear his voice. He's like, dude, I'm like, that's Pete Davidson. I'm like, it's really Pete Davidson. And he's like, I am the biggest fan. I've been showing people the hacksaw scene for years. He's like, that's like my thing. He's like, everybody on SNL has seen that. Um, that means Ariana Grande's yeah. seen it. That means Kate Beckinsale's and, and seen it. He, <laughs> He'll literally send me when, and then when part two came out, his favorite thing to do was invite people over to his apartment and he'd film them watching it and just <laughs> laughing his ass and getting their reactions, like pretty crazy people. And then he'd like send me videos That's of so it. It was good. just the coolest thing. He's such a cool guy. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. Pete's a good boy. I was, yeah. uh, I used to do open mics with him when he was like six, 15 or 16. Wow. I've known him since he was so little. Pete, he did good, buddy. He did good. He's doing good. There might need to be a Pete and Annie double murder scene then, right? <laughs> Pete definitely Pete wants probably, to be. Yeah, he course. definitely wants to be a terrifier. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I feel like a hack, but it's like I, I got to be in it. I'm sorry. No, I'd love to. I'd love to have both of you guys. It's, in it. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be amazing. Um, and then have you met the Impractical Jokers? Yeah. Yes. I met uh, Sal. I, who did I meet? No. Q. Q. Yes, the man. I think I didn't meet him though. We we uh, he sent me a DM. He's friends with my my buddies who like they're my co-producers on this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and they're gonna be. I think he's gonna be in something that they're making. So I might meet him in person soon. I like yeah. the um the Staten Island the connection. connection set. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got um is in uh there. Jost too, Colin Jost, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, Colin Jost and I'm, Casey Jost. I actually okay. know that for a fact because Casey, I worked on Impractical Jokers with Casey. I'm that's in a, I'm in, I'm, even though I'm there, I'm in a bit of a, my own little bubble, so I don't really yeah. know so much of the Staten Island pop culture sometimes. <laughs> now, okay, to have yeah. like a sick brain like this, like what? What's... What went wrong? Yeah, was it just <laughs> watching these when you were a kid or? Um, I don't know. Like I, I gravitated toward just monsters so early on, Yeah. so early on. And I've been watching slashers since I'm like yeah. five years old. Like I taped them off of TV, so like they were still censored, so that was like a nice segue. Like my yeah. mother saw that, you know, it's on TV. It's on, I didn't have cable till like yeah. late in the nineties, believe it or not. So it was all just things I'd tape off of TV and my mother would take me to this mom and pop video store and I just rent anything like, so it started with movies I'd tape that were censored. And then when she saw, I wasn't like killing animals or anything like yeah. that. She'd take me to the video store. She started letting me rent movies, you know, that were, you know, uncut, you know? Right. So like, yeah. and it was just, it was just all based on the D, the, the cover. I was going to say DVD, the yeah. VHS cover yeah. art. So I remember distinctly like the cover of Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh -huh. speaking to me. And it was all, if it was like the better the artwork, the more I wanted to see yeah. it. So it was like Leatherface, like beautiful painting of Leatherface or the painting of the Toxic Avenger yeah. on the box. Like I need to see that. What is going on here? And, uh, and yeah, she didn't give a shit. She would just let me rent it. And yeah. Yeah, it. my mom like didn't like gore, but my dad did. And she never, she just wouldn't watch it with us, but we could watch it. Oh, I never was like, like but things. you know what? I, I snuck TV once when I was like four or five. And remember when they had, I think it was only one season, they had a, a Nightmare on Elm Street show. Oh, yeah, yeah. There Freddy's Nightmares. Yeah. yeah, 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 of course. And I saw one. Oh, it fucked me so bad. It got me so bad. It was like they were sitting at a table. I should try to find this to like reclaim it. But, oh. They're sitting at a table and I wasn't supposed to be watching TV. Like we were only supposed to watch the Simpsons. That must have been a little older. It was like we were allowed to watch Thursday night Simpsons and was Simpsons on Thursday ever? I know it was on Sunday. It was like Simpsons and Martin we used to watch. But anyway. Oh, I love Martin. Yeah. <laughs> but so um still like the best show ever. But so funny. So I I snuck and watched it. And it was a scene where the family's like all sitting at the family's sitting at dinner and a noose comes down and just hangs, like just pulls the dad up and he's just hanging. And then a knife comes and stabs the mom in the back and just the parents are just dead. 
Oh, interesting. And I, okay. so every time my parents would be like reading me a story at yeah. night, I would just be waiting for like a noose to come or a knife. And I couldn't say anything because I had broken the rules. You know, I just have to sit there in this silent, panicky fear. Oh, that's great. And I always like, I don't know what I saw, but I always was like, you know, pulling the curtains open. And But I was always brave, but I was always like, I will go downstairs, but I will check every room. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I like being scared, it's fun. Yeah, for me, it's like the best, best feeling. Yeah, it's yeah so safe fun. and scared at the same time. <laughs> yeah, is, is such a high. But also, you get through it, and then there's the euphoria. Do you like roller coasters and stuff Love like that? Them. Yeah. yeah, he can't because he I, has fucking. I get like, motion sickness. I will say sick. though, the older I've gotten, it's, it's harder for me to handle. Yeah. Them, you know? like I get instant, he <laughs> instant headache when I'm on a roller coaster now. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but I, I love them. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, so. But them. it's that same. It's the same to me. It's like the same. It is. Yeah. For me, my um. Like, I always loved movies when I was a kid, and I could only watch rated R movies if there were horror movies for some reason. My mom would let me watch it because she'd be afraid. So she'd be like, yeah, you could watch it with me. So she could have, like, <laughs> oh, someone to wow, be that's like. cool. And then I my like dad that. would get so mad at it and be like, you let him watch this shit? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? But I remember um, the there's this, uh, one scene in Hellraiser that so good. my Hellraiser. parents went yeah. away like they just went out for the night and it was just me and my little brother and i put on hellraiser for him and this one scene scared him so bad that i got in so much trouble that i showed him also it scary was just that, like, funny like when you're their older yeah, sibling it's like hilarious yeah, exactly and it was like that type of nostalgia just made me love horror movies forever sure. well, also your yeah. mom it's hard to like be in the moment because your mom will be like and it's what so happened? fun. And that's the thing, are too. Are they vampires? She was always, like, she they was vampire? always like, so we're... fun to scare, too, because yeah. my mom's like very Asian. So <laughs> when she gets scared, it's just so funny. So I just <laughs> related <laughs> to just comedy. And comedy and horror are like very similar. They're very similar. similar. They, yeah, yeah. They tap into the same. Yeah, you have to hit like the primal. same beats yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, it really yeah. Does. yeah. Some of my favorite memories being scared as a kid was um, at like, and this is like when I'm what? 10 years old maybe younger oh my god probably like eight at on saturdays i think it would be in the middle of the night well like starting around like 12 30 they would play like the original twilight zone mm, tales from the dark yes. side this yeah. show called monsters i don't know it was another anthology show yeah what yeah. the hell was monsters yeah monsters yeah, will you look it up yeah. and um you know even though i loved horror movies i would still get freaked out yeah. and i would always you know my sister would uh, my older sister would like watch me on the weekends and i would just try and get her to stay up with yeah. me you know and then she would pass out and i'd be there in the dark and oh, just watch it all. one of the greatest feelings like in the world yeah. but the tales from the dark side theme music when you're a kid is one of the scariest yeah. themes ever ever um yeah, so I love that. Yeah, oh Twilight God. Zone, that theme song was scary too. Tales from the Crypt. And my mom, I love Tales from the Twilight Crypt. Zone. Oh Twilight Zone, God. the original Twilight Zone is my top three favorite shows yeah. of all day, still to this day. Well, yeah, we still watch it. Yeah. We still watch, we'll put on some old Rod Sterling. Oh, it's my so God. good. He's, this is ones, getting me so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Twilight Zone episodes that are good are like stunningly incredible. Yeah. They're, they're as good as it gets. I love them. Um, yeah, yeah I love and he Tales was like, uh, he, he said that he like wrote like, Every day he'll write like a new script for like a Twilight Zone yeah, episode. How crazy oh, yeah. is that? And they were an hour long too each episode. Smoker. Yeah, <laughs> like I know. I, I, always, I can't watch yeah. this because I always start smoking again. Yeah. I watched um what's his name's uh, David, Lynch, David Lynch's master class and I was just chain smoking after he's like i just smoke a cigarette and i drink wine i'm like i'm not gonna relapse on alcohol but i'm like chain smoking i'm like okay i don't smoke oh, i don't smoke, uh, I, don't smoke. I love him yeah. lynch do you I smoke cigarettes i don't no. did you never wow no never yeah cool Ooh. yeah well you my whole family did though which yeah. is weird so maybe I that's never, why you didn't because you were just like I, yeah never never got it you said before that um you are a fan of cronenberg which Huge. is yeah which is i could see because he does a lot of He's like super practical special effects. Big time body horror, really right. gross stuff. Really disgusting. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, disturbing. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Oh, like, what yeah. the fuck oh, is going right. on? We were talking and about, then the baby um, dick. Why is the boy's <laughs> dick in here? Crimes of the future. Right? Crimes so of the future. Yeah, How yeah. about crimes of we're all going to jail? We just watched kitty porn. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, that's the crime. People Everyone's are committed. searching for this. Oh my People god. People are looking all over the internet. They're scouring the internet for this. Just giving it to them. Yeah, but he that was, was he, we were just so grossed out the whole time because it was just so it's so uncomfortable. It is, yeah. He knows how to push it. He's he's like a 
Yeah, he's, but he's it's all like yeah. special effects. I mean, and it's like the same thing where he does use like visual effects and digital I, effects. Sure. I mean, his movies it. have have set some bars like in there, especially in their time, like the exploding head in scanners. When it came out, it was one of the most talked about gore effects. It still is. It's like one of the most iconic images ever. And they really the way like they really just blew up ahead with a shotgun. They, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, like that's how they did it. Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah. The yeah, that shit you just can't get away with anymore. I mean, like the guy that I grew up idolizing, Tom Savini, um, who did like the he created the like the first Jason design. He did the George oh. Romero zombie movies and Creep Show, and like, he, and he's also an actor. He's in From Dust Till Dawn. He's Sex Machine, you know, with the dick oh, gun. Yeah, like, so yeah. that's it. Yeah, so that's how I got into From Dust Till Dawn. So good. Oh, so good. But like he would do that. They would do that all the time. They would just blow up fake heads with like, with shotguns and do all these kind of crazy things. And honestly. <laughs> can't we do more things what? i want to blow things up we <laughs> shot like pumpkins once and i made a funny video out of it yeah like what so you started doing like short films right yeah. what is like your advice for people that want to start doing like a Crushing horror skulls. like a yeah. horror short film because that seems like how sure. a lot of horror people get into yeah. it right i get that question all the time first of all you just have to it's so cliche but you really just have to fucking do it and stick yeah. with it and be persistent and I say, if you're going to get into horror, do something that is going to get people talking, right? Like right. be, you know, em embrace exploitation. That that yeah. was that was my key going into this. You know, uh, I would yeah. say like, why is somebody, especially things are so, there's like s such saturation. Like everybody could make a horror movie or anything. It's like, what's going to make yours stand out? So yeah. it's like, if you have to cut a girl upside down with a hacksaw <laughs> and show every bit of it, guess what? It's going to probably get people talking, right? <laughs> you know? And even, you know, when you see, you're going to really like the end of the Terrifier short film in All Hallows Eve. I can't wait. I, we do something really, it's probably the most despicable thing that art does, believe it or not. I can't it's wait. Really, and yeah. that people would talk like, holy shit, you got to see how this thing ends. Like, it's really crazy. Um, what was that, that movie? What was that thing you showed me <laughs> with the guy who's fucking his dad? <laughs> the guy was fucking his dad he's like raping his dad oh um ari aster he did oh, um like midsummer great, hereditary yeah, yeah. I like he both did movies. a yeah, he he did, did, when they jump yeah uh, the crunchiness yeah I, I love his <laughs> he did uh a short film have you seen this one no. it was called so before all his before yeah, all this it's and so it's disturbing. like a horror movie but it's called like it's called there's something strange with the Johnsons. <laughs> the and, and it starts off, I'll just say this. It starts off as like this little kid. He's like jerking off in his room and his dad walks in. His dad's like, oh, I'm sorry, son. Oh. And then his dad's like, you know, and he sits down, gives him the talk like, you know, it's OK. Like, this is just like what people, kids do. You go through this, you know, and he's like, all right, dad. Yeah, thank you. And the dad walks out. And then he, oh, the geez. kid's hands, the picture is a picture of his dad. Oh, he was okay. to, and then it flashes forward to the future where he's like getting married and like, they're like taking pictures and he's grabbing his dad's ass and his dad's like, so basically he's just been raping his dad. For, and the whole thing is about how he like rapes his it's dad. It's like a reverse oh molestation. Wow. It's so crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I have no idea but this they exists. Make it yeah. my life. They brought so many beautiful little gems into my life. That's nuts, <laughs> man. But like, his Ari Aster is great at like making horror out of like weird things that you wouldn't think yeah, is like a yeah. horror yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a great imagination, man. It's very unique. He is. Uh, yeah, I and, just saw um, Hereditary for the first time recently. <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome, yeah, and I'm yeah. I, I'm very behind on modern horror movies, so yeah, I'm yeah. very happy when I finally get to see one and I yeah. enjoy it. A well, lot. Midsummer was like yeah. so fucking good too. Did have you, you? Oh, sorry. I, no, I was gonna say, have you ever seen? I don't know if you would like it now compared to Midsummer, but have you seen the original Wicker Man? Mm -mm. Yeah, so it's very much like. Oh right, really? yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. one of my yeah, it's great ending. It's one of my favorite horror movies, but I, I don't know if it would hold up for you. They made but a remake, remake, right, right with like Nicholas Cage, not right? Cage yeah, <laughs> yeah, Wait, yeah. did I see that? Maybe, yeah. It was a remake, Nicholas Cage, and he's like, "Oh, what's going on?" I do. Nicholas Cage playing Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage playing himself was so good. Did you I see that movie? Loved it. That was so I awesome. Fucking love Nicholas Cage. So Anyone much. that has like a sense of humor about themselves is like, it's like yeah, it's to the moon. So good. 
Well, like, my God, it, you can say whatever you want. Like some, you know, people, they, they like to make fun of him sometimes with how over the top. Like he's made some of the most amazing, he's perfect. so many he's perfect. classics. I yeah, mean, just yeah. like, oh, my God. You like, know who he's, he's friends with? Oh. Pauly Shore. That's awesome. <laughs> Pauly Shore's neighbors with him in Vegas. I love it. I They're love boys. it. They're boys. Like that's, that's one of my movie. friends was like on the road with him. <laughs> And like was like, yeah, maybe we'll meet in a cage or whatever. And then he just like drove by. And I was like, it's real. That's incredible. But, oh, my God. Face off the rock. That whole yeah. like string. Face off was everything. I incredible. Like leaving Las Vegas. Leaving, leaving Las Vegas. Vegas. Adaptation. Elizabeth Shue. We love Moonstruck, you. Moonstruck. Wild at heart. I could go on yeah, and they're on. All good. He an endless amount of incredible movies. I love it. I would kill to work with him one day. Oh, my well, God. I maybe. Him. Yeah. He's so awesome. were there any like movies like. Guys, Even wanna... like not movie, like some like videos or anything that really like, what is the ones that like really disturbed you or really where you were like, this is too much or too hard. I, I, I oh realized you God, did. Right? Uh, you talked about martyrs. That's the French one, right? It is. That was one of the that movies mo that the end of that movie devastated me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely devastated me. Yeah. In yeah. a really powerful way, not just because it was like yeah, gore yeah. I couldn't handle. It's because you're so invested in the characters and just what happens to her. It's yeah, just like, yeah. oh my God. Have you, have you seen <laughs> that one? I, did, I watched that one with you. I don't think so. It was all Oh, you'll where, love it. You have to watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's like the theme is like to get like to transcend transcend through torture <clears throat> so they're basically just torturing oh, this girl okay i like that no you will lo it's a great <laughs> yeah. movie yeah. It's and it starts off like as like a revenge like movie love it Hostel yeah, so love it. Great. yeah. Hostel believe was it or not, so like, good of course, which is crazy for me to say but i'm not like huge into the torture porn right, right? Yeah. i like them but and that's like kind of what I, what I do i guess i mean they consider art torture porn i guess but yeah i mean i just like and i don't just love slashers or horror i love movies i'm, yeah. I'm obsessed with just yeah. movies i've um, been watching everything since i'm a kid action movies just dramas thrillers yeah. like everything i was gonna say before when you're talking about going to see requiem for a dream with your dad yeah. i saw silence of the lambs with my aunt and my sister <laughs> when i was okay so that came out in 1990 so I was born in 84, so six years old. I was that had no idea what was going on. I, I, I thought I was because I was already obsessed with horror movies yeah. and they knew I loved Jason and Freddy. Yeah. They're like, oh, Dude, this do you talk killer now? Guy. Do you talk often now? <laughs> I'll tell you what, that fucking really for a kid that age, I'm like, what the fuck? That is a shocking thing. I remember Amandrina is shocking. I remember being so confused. Obviously, I could not follow anything going on right. in that movie, but I loved Hannibal Lecter. Uh -huh. Like I knew he was just like, you know, captivating. Even yeah. when I was a little kid. And I was horrified of Buffalo Bill. Horrified because I knew instinctually that was a real serial killer. Like yeah. that could really happen. Just like him, you know, abducting the woman, bringing her into the van. Like that was creepy. The fucking tucking scene. I was so confused as to what was going on. I didn't even know that was the same <laughs> character. Like I was like, where, where are we? Like, what is happening? Oh, what like a she got out of yeah, the thing. Like, what a what a what a time. Is that her? What I'm an experience. Too. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of all time to this day. I am obsessed. Yeah, with I do movie. think that uh, my favorite movies are always <laughs> creepy. Those are the ones you remember because it made you feel something, especially when you were a kid. Definitely, and they're yeah. the yeah. best ones to go see in the theater too. So it's like most of the horror movies I've watched have been in theaters. Yeah, we should have seen that the Edie Munchie one in theaters. The newest one uh, though, with the yeah. cannibals? Yeah. Uh, Which one? With, uh, What's the, the dude the, from Timothy? Dune? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Timothy. The uh, crunchy. Timothy. Oh, Bones and all. Bones yeah. and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. it's awesome. It was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we were trying to watch it at his, in his mom's basement. Like and it was not working. <laughs> we had to like, like get a bootleg version. We of like, that. I love. Listen, I love that I'm marrying into a just Jersey trash family. It's like so exciting. It's like, you know. But it's like when we go home, it's like all right, we gotta we we go back. We regress back into exactly who we were. But we're just like on air mattresses trying to get things to reboot. Like ah. Oh my god. It was like so yeah. fun. We're like getting into it, and then we're like ah. Oh. <laughs> so we haven't watched it, but we did have an opportunity to see it in the theater, and we didn't see it. They had it in Michigan at that place. That's when we saw the menu. Oh, I, I menu love was the so menu. Good. That was probably my favorite modern horror movie that I've seen in like the long, like the past five years. Or did something. you see Barbarian? I did. I liked Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. those big old, not yeah, big that's old my juicers. The, the milk. That's, yeah, that's like that's my kind of scene. That's yeah. just, that's the scene I would write. That's I like, I like that. the girl. Like she's like, just drink it. Just take the bottle. I'm like oh my god. Yeah. She's like, just do what she says. That was, the audience was loving that movie. Yeah. The, the yeah. theater I was in, they were just like, what are we watching here? What is happening? Yeah. 
Well, I liked the crushy, mushy head too. And she crushed his head. His head got she crushed. She did. At the yeah, end. yeah, yeah. I love the the oh, Bill Skarsgård death. That was a great uh, oh, jump so scare fun. and a great fucking murder. He was so creepy. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I just he loved, was being so great. I <laughs> love the whole opening, the first half, just like you don't know where it was going, just the misdirect of you thinking he's going to be. When like, he was yeah. in the thing, he was like, this is how you do the duvet cover. Like, it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. Oh, and those juicy lips. I do remember. I do remember those juicy clown lips. Scarsgard lips. Ooh, those juicy, juicy child murdering lips. I used to always read um, back when I read as a child. Um, I loved Fear Street. Okay. Fear that Street they just was made like, into a show yeah, or movies now, right? I never watched it because I, I felt. Either. Yeah, I know the name though. I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But it was like, a, it was like teen it was like goosebumps for older kids, but it was like for girls. So it was like girly murder. Oh, that's what it, interesting. Okay. It would be like, you know, she's like getting ready to go to prom and then she's her neck's broken and she fell off the stairs and it was like just murdery horror. Oh, that's pretty cool. It was I awesome. Like yeah. yeah. Very cool. Maybe that's where it all began. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this babysitter's club, nobody dies. What's going on here? And then are you interested in, do you like true crime? Not really. Yeah. No. Yeah, because it's thing. fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> I've it's seen, totally fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I've seen like real fucked up shit, especially when you're a kid and you sneak those uh, like faces of death tapes yeah, and oh whatever. My God. But there are yeah. images that I still can't get out of my out of my head. Oh, well, I have um, a really yeah. bad one. Oof. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you got plenty. And I have friends who are yeah. cops and they'll just, you know how crazy yeah. and like they'll yeah. just send a video or something without... <laughs> telling me and i'm like dude uh just because i go make back to these the days where you send pictures of your shit yeah. i'm like just because you know i make these yeah. movies like this does nothing for me nothing no, it's positive like, kind of the opposite that are like it's ruins my job opposite. yeah I mean, this is hard no that's how i feel too where it's like look come on we're making fun we're playing but, here yeah. we're not, this isn't real no yeah. i hate i was gonna ask you like do you have you ever been interested in going to like see bodies in morgues and stuff like that that would interest me. Yeah. yeah, that would for sure. Have you um, visited the Museum of Death here? No, it's that's so more creepy. like a little true crime. But it is here for? so crazy. Tomorrow. It's so disgusting. Yeah, but I'll be back. It'll make you feel good. It's really? like serial. It's feel like sick. serial killer stuff. Is it like torture? Um, they have no, like they have one like of the like Heaven's Gate. They stuff have like or? one of the Heaven's Gates. Um, uh, they do like a display. They like they the, have them in like bunk beds. The bunk beds. Yeah. Really? Jeez. It's so disgusting. Is, but they I'll have like care. pictures of the so real crime that, scenes. But it's so. Well, but you're yeah. like. <laughs> so, but I will say, I dip my toes in every once in a while, and that's real. That's responsible for the kill and terrifier too. Is an actual crime photo of one of Jack the Ripper's his la his last victim and the worst the worst one I saw a picture oh, wow. of her body mutilated on a bed and I was like that's what art's gonna do to somebody oh, wow. yeah yeah so well never, guys uh, <laughs> check it out I um yeah no I just I'm just trying to think of things I've seen I had a uh Jim Norton for some reason got me into this for a second but I love him, by the way. yeah he's the best <laughs> I was I, I did a roast with him that hasn't come out yet but maybe it'll have come out when this comes out and one of my jokes was because I used to go on the road with him and he would always order boneless skinless chicken boiled chicken breast okay I was like you are what you eat. But I was literally boiling chicken breast the other day and I was like, it literally does look like Jim Norton. Like, I don't even mean it. It's like, Jim, it's, maybe I think it's hot. I'm not insulting you, but it's like, you do look like boiled chicken. I don't know why. That's but crazy. I love but I love him so much. But he got me like looking at two things I saw. I actually really liked this one thing he showed me was um, this guy dying on stage, oh, this Jesus. comedian dying oh, on stage. And no one knew he was dying. They thought they were like laughing. Oh, that's But I horrifying. actually kind of liked it because- <laughs> I kind of liked it because it's like he's dying, like getting laughs. I don't know. <laughs> could be worse. Could be way worse. But they're worse. all like, oh, yeah, and then you just way. see them like pull him because it was live on TV. It was back in like, Oof. I think the 70s. See, when you I know was what? growing I up. I think I've seen that. Yeah. I think I've seen that. But that, yeah. like, I kind of, I don't know, something got intrigued. But he got me into seeing pictures, the last pictures of people before they die. I don't like that. <laughs> That's not a genre I'm into. But he got me into it. I was like, Jen, what the fuck? And then you're yeah. like, these people are like, like, they're like, get me out of here. And yeah. they don't get out. 
Anyway. Believe. Yeah, no, yeah. I grew up in the generation of the internet where I was like, hey, you want to watch two guys, one horse, or one guy, <laughs> one jar? <laughs> yeah. Zoo. Zoo? Did you see Zoo? No. The, the <laughs> snuff movie, basically. You didn't get sent around to you? Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. It, it didn't make it over the ferry? It's real? It's real. Okay, it's oh, real. No. It's about people I'll that fuck, watch. I'll tell you right now. fuck farm animals. Okay. <laughs> and there's this scene, I have a joke about the scene where like this guy gets... He gets like pumped in the ass by a horse, and you need friends because they have to like insert the penis oh, in. Yeah. And they could they would catch these people because there would be, they'd have buckets on the bottom of the buckets. There'd be footprints from them standing on the buckets. They get butt fucked by these horses. Oh my god! And anyway, so the guy gets like butt fucked to death. To He's death. Like rushed to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, like it like t- took out his insides. What did he think was gonna happen? Have you ever seen know. the size of a fucking horse? <laughs> Listen, tremendous. he was yeah, so that's crazy. excited. Yeah. And I don't want to give away the punchline of my joke, but guys, come see me live because I do have a great horse fucking guy to death joke. It's, it's amazing. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, but this is their thing. This is what they like. So I, this is why I like what you do because you're doing fun play, play things. Yeah, keep it fake. <laughs> and, it is so fun and fake. Keep it playful and fake. <laughs> like, I don't think you're a psycho at all. Do you know what I'm I mean? Re- thank you. I don't I'm think really you not. think you I, are either. I, 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 know, I mean, listen, I'm it's fun 40 to years like... old. I, I know at this point I'm you know, never going to kill anybody. I'm yeah. not, uh, I, you know. <laughs> I just... Todd, uh, Todd did beat me earlier with a thing in my face. <laughs> I don't know. I got to. You have to have a weapon because it's not going to be believable that your noodle arms did this to me. <laughs> People have seen your arms, Todd. I'm not going to make it seem like he beat me up. <laughs> it's so cute. It's an honor to be sliced up. Thank you look you. great. It looks. It good. looks so I, good. It was I, so fun. So you brought me some old school. Uh, I went and got some stuff from liquid the... latex and some thick blood things that I haven't played with in a while that I had a lot of fun and I just yes, kept, kept and going. I'm glad you were able to make do with what I had because I just went to. Um, I had to work earlier, so I went to this place called Ursula's Costumes. It's just this little like costume shop that I like to go to. I get so excited when I walk in. I'm like, ooh, what are we gonna find here? And they That's only so had fun. like a few scars and stuff, but they had the putty and the. So the putty, like mortician's wax, is what what is what we call it. What I used to call it. Um, was the first thing I really got my hands on when I was like 12. That was like a game changer. And it's just, you know, it's just mortician's wax, just putty basically. But it's so instant, just making like these thick cuts, and it blends into your skin like just so beautifully. And is I that still, to rebuild the faces? Is that why it's it called mortician? Yeah. Uh, so you know, yeah. Would that whole, gross you out helping a dead body's face? Actually, probably not. No. Yeah, I don't know. It depends. Because there's it a depends. smell that you don't usually no, do. No, that's with. true too. That's gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's weird. Like in fight or flight things, I'm good. Like I'm not gonna faint or anything like that. But I don't go out of my way to watch <laughs> death videos or surgeries. It's Watching, just not my yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't like surgeries um, either. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I'm like, I feel like I want to desensitize myself to it because I'm like, what? Why don't why? Don't why get, can some people yeah. do this and I can't do this? Don't get me wrong. Like, it's, there's a big part of me that wants to watch yeah. it, but yeah. I'm just like, I know the it's all downside at the end of the yeah, day. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, doctors have the highest rate of suicide at any. I thought it was dentists. Oh, I didn't know that. Told booth no, yeah, it's doctors. I just found that out recently, and I was like, oh my god, was it on the computer probably, now? Probably no. Wow. <laughs> Everything Todd has said today, he learned <laughs> one second before he said that, it. Listen, that makes I'm not surprised, really. Yeah. Right? Um, well, dentists and, too. I used used dentists. to be what I heard because they're just causing pain. Well, they love they're they're uh, sadists, right? I guess yeah. so. <laughs> they love it. That's like a child's view on my dentist. dentist is like kind of creepy. My like childhood dentist when I think he kind of like he always remind me of Mister Rogers and like <laughs> this is like a little bit of like too like too much pep in his step for yeah, what he was a doing. Much. The but I guess they gave us stickers. The fingers are in your still, mouth too long. Still gets me. Well, back in my drinking days, I had a little thing called drench mouth. Ew. Yes, bro. I was fucked up, okay? I had fucked up bleeding weird gums. I was drinking heavily. And uh, they would have to go scrape my gums. I'd have to go and they'd have to scrape my gums for me because they were inflamed. Ooh. I don't know why I'm sharing this. The, I'm well, over like... There what did you to be a expect part of my... when I'm me being here? When you, talk when about you, when you quit and... drinking, when you first quit drinking, I quit drinking when I was 25, so forever ago. But when you first quit drinking and you like go to AA and stuff, it's like... Everyone's like, yeah, these horror stories. Let's talk about these the good old days or these like crazy days of all these things you do. 
And then, you know, like my identity was still like, I'm this crazy partier. Like this does look like my one of my scooter accidents. Like I looked like this several times. This does remind me of old me. I would always wake up like bleeding. Like, oh, like I always checked for my teeth. I was always like, oh, okay, geez. I got my teeth. But um, these stories would be like these good stories. And then the further away from it I get, I'm like, I don't think I like these stories yeah. anymore. <laughs> These fucking weird stories. But anyway. I, I have a one last question because we're at a minute fifteen, but um, a minute or hour fifteen. Oh boy! <laughs> but um, time slow. Going <laughs> back to like, so when you start doing like uh, short films and you're trying to start out, so you make the short film, and then what is what is like the next step? You just like now would you just put it on YouTube or would do you like have to send it out? Yeah, I think um well what I did was I put it into some festivals, like my first two short films with Art the Clown. Okay. They didn't get into any big festivals. Nobody wanted them. They played in like some lower level obscure ones. Yeah. But the ones they were in, people dug them, dug them and got some notoriety, but nothing crazy. And eventually I just threw them on YouTube. But this was around 2010, 11. Right. So YouTube wasn't what it is now. Yeah. yeah. Um but from that because you know art just had that face i mean it just started people started finding it and spreading it and then before you knew it the terrifier short film had like 150,000 views at one point and that was pretty good for like a 20 minute short yeah. film back then and the producer of all hallows eve was just going through youtube with this the uh, the idea in mind to make a halloween based anthology film from shorts that were already made and he found mine cuz it takes place on halloween always with art and uh, he loved Art the Clown. He contacted me. He's like, dude, I want to put this in my movie and I want to use your clown as like the poster. He's like, that clown is so cool. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, man, that's great. I was like, and then I was like, I also have this other short with art. And then I wound up, you know, we wound up figuring out how to turn that into like this feature length movie. Uh, never what I wanted to do. But I always say, and like I've heard, you know, we both talking about Tarantino. We love Tarantino. Like, he said this in an interview. He's like, if you just make something that's fucking awesome not saying what i made was awesome but hey, Arthur, wait, wait a minute. Arthur so clown awesome. had, Arthur clown so had awesome. something it's you know? so awesome, yes. but like you know when you put it out there it's like eventually it's gonna somebody's gonna find it so yeah. just especially now even though there's a lot of competition and everybody right. can make a movie i mean if you just just you have to make it first and make something that's going to stand out that's my second yeah. that's the key or else you know like if you're getting into movies and you want to stand out unless you're the greatest writer like don't don't write a scene where it's just two people having coffee yeah. unless you have the most insane dialogue and content where he's like, Oh, you got to see these two people drinking coffee. <laughs> like, you know, chances and how are, many <laughs> people short films are two people sure. drinking coffee and really like, chances are people are going to want to see the hacksaw scene. Yeah, over the coffee, yeah, yeah. You know, so feed into that and just go into, you know, take advantage of the exploitation or some genre, which is striking right. imagery or action or just something cool. Um, you know, and you just have a better chance of someone discovering you if you do that. Yeah. So, okay, so now you're going to, we'll wrap this up here in a second, but so you're going to these, you're having this new, it's like a second wind in life, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty wild. So you're going to, I wanted, okay, so as far as like, just for the girl question, so like when you're making these movies and stuff and you have a girlfriend or you're like, babe, I can't come home, I'm too busy sawing this bitch's pussy in half, like, yeah. is it like that? And they're like, what are you doing at work? Like, is it like that? Yeah. Um, no, I've been. I've had some horrifying experiences with a girlfriend <laughs> making movies. One movie, it was so bad, and I had the worst time making the movie. I actually scrapped the entire movie. We were like 70% of it we shot, and I was like, I can't even, I can't even have a memory of this. Like, I, like I'll watch this movie and have trauma, PTSD. <laughs> I scrapped the entire movie. Um, I think Terrifier 1, when I made it, I was single, so that was better, <laughs> much yeah. better. Part two, I had a girlfriend, but she was she was really cool and she was yeah, she it understood, yeah, yeah. It was, but I was gone for so long, yeah. you know, like we we shot like hours away. I was gone for like weeks just in the middle of nowhere shooting Terrifier. And now are um, you kind of like uh you know, you're going the, on the circuit, is it? Is it yeah. You're getting yeah. some flashes and stuff, or you're signing titties and no, stuff? I I have signed like girls made me sign their leg and like their eye maybe like a few times maybe like five times i've signed people's bodies and they're like yeah i'm gonna get this tattoo and i'm like i sign a lot of bodies if someone have, comes, yeah. I, well, I make i love when people have like a little thing that's off you know <laughs> a little different thing so i like the little hands there's a there's a little there's a it's guy with great. this little hand in um in vegas he's got my favorite little lobster oh, hand that's, that's he always cool. presents it to really? me I'm like my favorite and i always sign it if they ever do that i i am so careful i make it so small i'm like i can't believe you're really doing it <laughs> and it, dave does it he's like this huge friggin <laughs> name I'm like this is crazy oh my God. <laughs> 
I love it. All right, but, well, thank you so much for coming. Oh this is God. so cool. I, I would I, love to do more stuff with you, and you're always welcome to come back whenever. This you want. was an honor. I would come on anytime. I know. You it was are the so best. good. I, love you. I can't wait. Guys, I love you guys. Maybe seriously. we're going to a strip club later. I don't know. <laughs> Let's do it. It's gonna be fun. Let's do it. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for fucking my face up. <laughs> This is any wood, we ain't gotta pretend Cause this is all real steel from beginning to end This is any wood, we ain't gotta pretend Cause this is all real steel from beginning to end Raised as a twin, I'm a slug with bananas Got bogues and bows, yeah, I pose for the cameras Rolling on my scooter and you know I'm looking fresh Eating my banana, drinking liquid death this is any wood, we manifest the check. Just open up a door and Esther was on the steps. This is any wood, we manifest the check. Just open up a door and Esther was on the steps.